Welcome to Wrestling With Heart, a podcast looking at pro wrestlers giving back to their community. Join me, Stanley Carr, as I interview wrestling's hottest names who use their platforms as entertainers to raise awareness and do community service. Hello and welcome to another edition of Wrestling With Heart. This is the show where we talk with professional wrestlers and professional wrestling personalities about their lives in and outside of the ring, as well as doing acts of charity work community service, volunteering, and spreading positive vibes. We're all about positivity here on the show. And with me today, I've got a very special guest, Mr. Travis Trammell. He is the founder of Pro Wrestling is for Everyone. He's a husband and father of two with a history of serving in children's ministry and a passion for independent wrestling. He decided to start something that resonates with both on a personal level. Travis, welcome to Wrestling with Heart. How's it going? Good, good. Thank you for coming on here. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. Yeah, so we'll get started talking about your upbringing and childhood. Where are you from? I am from the big city of Greer, South Carolina. Ah. uh, Greenville County. Greenville County, Uh, okay. So the Spartanburg County now. So that's how uh, our good friend Ron Emerson hooked us up. So yeah. Ron's Got been on the show him. before. Yeah. Good dude. Good dude. So small town? It's grown, but yeah, overall. All right. Okay. I mean, the Carolinas had a lot of wrestling history. Talk about yes. the Crockett's um, and Absolutely. as well as other territories. Uh, a lot of the big stars like Ric Flair and Harley Race uh, made their name there, as well as many others um absolutely lots of good stuff in the carolinas what was it about wrestling that got you hooked as a kid growing up were you a fan were you not a fan to discover it later on um i was absolutely a fan uh the mo- first moment i saw it i was drawn in instantly i remember being a kid probably uh, second grade maybe not being able to sleep and waking up and sneaking into the living room, my dad watching uh, WCW Saturday night and seeing uh, the sting, you know, surfer sting, bleach blonde hair, you know, you know, bright colors celebrating on top rope. I was, I was, you know, peeking around the, the corner of the living room. <laughs> Just, I was drawn in. I was mesmerized. And, so, and then from that moment on, I was like, all right, dad, you can't can't get rid of me i'm watching it with you and then from that and again i'm 37 years old now i've been sucked in ever since so that's kind of like how i got into it myself i just watched with my dad one night and the rest was history uh my experience was more wwe wwf at the time this was like the peak the height of the attitude era with the rock and right. stone cold and all that stuff going on so wcw saturday night i believe aired on tbs yes that Super was station. Superstation. I think it was like 6.05 was like the time yeah. when it started. So you got that like and the moment, time. The moment my dad realized I had an interest, it was WWF and he was buying me old VHS tapes. So it just snowballed from there. So <laughs> you got like all the figurines too, the action figures. Oh yeah. It just snowballed. My dad embraced it. The moment he realized I was interested too, it just... Yeah, he embraced it, and this it, like it all it all snowballed from there. So WWF, old old NWA stuff, AWA, ECW, mm-hmm. yeah, it just yeah, all of it. What Always was been a fan. who were like some of your favorites growing up to watch? Um, as I said, Sting, Shawn Michaels, um, Lex Luger. As I got older. And actually wanted to be, you know, train and be involved in that kind of stuff. You know, I started leaning toward like Z Malenko and Canyon and Eddie Guerrero, those guys. But I had, I had my whole, that that was kind of, those, those, that's kind of my top guys that I rattle off there. Kind of like that technical aspect. With oh, yeah. Guys definitely. like Malenko. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. So you had briefly, had a little bit of training tell me about that experience um it's not easy to be a wrestler it's not it's not at all um not at all at I, I wasn't prepared for it at all um i briefly very briefly trained with uh 
APW here in Bullen Springs, South Carolina, right down the road. Um, and just the, the my work schedule at the time, it just I, I wasn't able to commit to it like I wanted to. But um, but um, I was briefly trained with uh by a guy wrestles here in the upstate, Josh Powers. He's part of a group called uh, Pro Wrestling Turbo here in the upstate, and a guy named Chandra Lynch, who still wrestles around North Carolina. Both those guys are my trainers. But yeah, sadly, I couldn't stick with it. But that's kind of how I got my foot in the door with everything else, staying in touch with those guys and making connections and, and everything. You knew right then and there you still wanted to do it, even then. Um, yeah. Was there a period of time, or have you still now have thought about going back and getting that training, or ha- at least having a couple matches? Um, no. <laughs> like I said, again, at this point in my life, I'm 37, and uh, the aches and pains and life just kind of caught up to me. Um, I'm happy just being involved at sure. this point. I was briefly involved with a group. I also started in a called uh, MTC Events, and we were just like a ministry-related pro wrestling group. And we decided we wanted to partner with um, any promotion that was interested to just help put on a show. We just help have uh, tools there to um, just to be helpful. And uh, I got involved with a show. And I'll leave the name of that promotion out of it. But lots of big names are on there. People I never thought I'd get to meet. You know, Childhood Heroes, Nikita Koloff, um, Eric Young, the Good Brothers. Lots of, a lot, it was an outstanding show. But one thing led to another. And uh, let's just say money wasn't there that should have been there. And uh, again, it's, really, it's not a funny story at all <laughs> but um but uh yeah i got burnt out and i realized not, not so much a funny story as much like as like a eye opening of like all right not all wrestling is it all is, is it can, can be can be an ugly situation and uh so with that being said I kind of got out of it for a little bit until I met the people I'm currently involved with now. And again, I feel like that the, the delivery to that made it sound like it'd be more interesting than what it was. And sorry, that was a letdown. But like, like I guess no. as far as funny stories about my training, I, I wouldn't really, it was, it was involved for that long to kind of really have anything interesting happening during my training, I guess. So, yeah. It was kind of like an in and out kind of thing, but you knew. It really was. You knew you wanted to still be involved in the business, and that's that's the great thing. There's a lot of roles and different slots yes. you could be in, uh, backstage I or in there front. Is a, I believe the camera. Some people would argue with me with this, but I believe there is a place, maybe not necessarily inside the ring, but I feel like if if you really have a passion to be involved in pro wrestling, I feel like there is a place for everyone in some magnitude. The being a professional wrestler is not for everyone. Me, uh, me, as, as an example, but I do feel like there's a place for everyone. In yeah, the professional wrestling. I love that, and we want to talk a little bit about the organization you're involved with in just a second. But I want to talk about you had mentioned you've done some ministry work. Uh, let's talk mm-hmm. about that. <clears throat> um, I'm uh, I teach a three and four year olds class at my my church here in, uh, in Duncan, South Carolina, where we live now, is a Four Points Church. Uh, I've done youth ministry. I've helped with youth ministry. I've done children's ministry for a while. Um, I, I love it. I'm a devout Christian. Um, and my faith is my most important thing in my life. Um, and I, I get joy out of doing children's ministry. Like I said, I've helped with, uh, with teens, with uh, student ministry as well. And we've done other things are our, 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 our church just as far as like outreach community stuff as well we've been involved with that as as well with uh we do a thanksgiving uh turkey uh drive every year we help prepare, prepare meals for uh you know those in need and just stuff like that yeah i mean it's the goodness of your heart that's led yourself to 
get out there and do those things, meet a lot of people, network, as you said, not only with wrestling, but at, at your church and other places or in your community. Um, any fun stories from that you would like to talk about? Um, said, uh, I don't think anything in particular. Uh, hmm. I mean, with, with children's ministry dealing with kids, you kind of never know what's going to be said or what's going to happen. But um, uh, actually, uh, one of the promotions that I'm involved with, uh, American Wrestling, uh, well, uh, Classic Pro Wrestling, we had a show uh, earlier this uh, last month, excuse me. And uh, one of my students, a little kid named Noah, his parents brought him. And uh, I actually po- I shared the video on my Facebook. He had, uh, uh, he got into an argument during the uh, intermission, during meet and greet with one of the wrestlers. And it, he's five, I think. And uh, as Jackson's saying, he's kind of a uh, horror movie gimmick. Let's just say that. Mm-hmm. And they got into an argument back and forth at the merch table. And this is hysterical because he, he he was like, what's wrong with your face? You're all painted. It's like, and they were just arguing. It was great. Uh, just that's fun. Um, Man, I can't think of anything else off the top of my head as far as any great stories. It, it, it's been a blessing. Like I said, it's it's ab- above – Above wrestling, my my faith and this you know the you know serving you know my Lord and Savior is priority. So like I said, there's lots of blessing, lots of joy out, out, of, out of being involved with that. Yeah, you've done it for a long time, and you were able to take that passion and combine it with your love for pro wrestling. You've been a fan all your life, watched all the companies, watched a lot of people throughout throughout the last several decades, and. I love this idea of behind this organization, Pro Wrestling for Everyone, much like our podcast. It's a show. It's an organization that tries to reach out and do good for your community and, and, and inclusion and diversity. There's been so much inclusion and diversity in pro wrestling for the last decade or so, not only with, with women, but with LGBTQ and African Americans and just so many people across the board. Uh, what got you started with this organization? Pro wrestling is for everyone. Um, I just tell you kind of how it started for me. Um, again, as I said earlier, even though my training didn't stay, I knew I had a God-given passion and purpose to be involved with independent wrestling somehow. After several failed attempts with his previous encounters and stuff, um, with a uh, failed organization I was part of before, um, I well before I say that, um, both of my children have uh, sensory processing disorder and ADHD. Uh, my son a little more severe, I guess, than my daughter. But um, I had noticed with um, AEW that they had partnered with an organization called Culture City, providing sensory inclusion stuff as well for their shows. And as a parent of some of the sensory needs, I said, wow, something I've never really seen done many other places. So I thought that was great. And so, again, fast forward, me being involved with wrestling and stuff. And then I was asked to be a part of a organization that, again, didn't last. But And I brought up, I said, listen, uh, AEW has this. And uh, this is, uh, that's obviously the big league standard. But um, I feel the need is there for independent wrestling, just the same. Cause there's still loud music. There's still the ring noise. There's still everything there. And uh, I got to go ahead for that. So I got all the supplies, bought everything, had everything ready then. Um, and then again, that was a failed, you know, that, that, that opportunity fell through, but I still had this stuff um, with me. It's in my garage. And again, I, and I kind of had this realization that like, I kind of pulled my attention. I looked back on myself because like, I was like, I can't be involved wrestling this way. I can't be involved wrestling this way so I kind of did like a reflection thing and then like I look I looked at my family 
you know, I was like, I looked at my kids and I, oh, that, so, so like, I realized that need was there for sensory inclusion. I said, okay, here we go. So fast forward, um, I, I meet um, Jimmy Ward, who is the promoter for um, American Wrestling League and Classic Pro Wrestling, two promotions I'm involved with. Um, and uh, also Casey Leanne, she is uh, she, she's a part of the organization too. Um, I've seen a post she had made talking about wanting to get interested in do, getting some sensory stuff for kids. For, and I was like, hey, cool, I've had this stuff, just you know, whatever. And then I'd help that Jimmy just odds it in, lead up to a show earlier in the year. So I met with him. We just kind of had a sit down discussion on about about me being part of the team helping him and um and then i'd also mention what casey had said about the sensory stuff so he brought me on to help with social media and stuff and he was on he was open and on board to also having the sensory inclusion aspect as well it left he left me up to to head that up and so i uh, jumped on board with them we did two shows we did September 2nd. We're also a part of Pro Wrestling Union. I don't know if you've seen me or Ron sharing yeah. things about Pro Wrestling Union as mm -hmm. well. We're under that umbrella. It's a, a Pro Wrestling Union's umbrella promotion that covers uh, AWL, CPW, several other promotions. We did uh, Pro Wrestling Union Parade of Champions back on September 2nd, and we provided the sensory inclusion for that as well. And then we did... Uh, Classic Pro Wrestling Takeover the 23rd last month, and we did, did it there as well, also. And then I kept seeing uh, this stuff on Facebook, you know, highlighting what we're doing, you know, and uh, I kind of didn't like, like, the attention on me, kind of. I didn't like seeing uh, Travis Tremel providing sensory inclusion. Look at this. So I, I thought I wanted to put a name on it to kind of take the attention off of me as a person more so on the purpose. Mm -hmm. And so one night I was like, uh, I just was just kind of thinking and Ron had shared some of the posts and used the hashtag pro wrestling for everyone. So I was like, I like it. Thanks, Ron. That's what I'm using. That's what I'm calling it. So, uh, yeah, I made the page. Um, all the distractions are out the window. So I'm <laughs> going to uh, uh, pro wrestling for everyone. Here we go. And then, uh, so I threw it, I, I chose the name, made the page, made the logo and said, all right, this is what we're going to call our sensory inclusion thing. And then I worked third shift and then I woke up that day after and the re re the reception reaction was just blown up. And I was like, oh, wow. So yeah. And that's kind of where we're at now. So. What's, what's like your goal as far as the organization, where do you want to see it go in the next five years or so? Um, man, I haven't really thought that far ahead to be honest, because honestly, I didn't think we'd have the opportunities we've got in the, oh man, I don't think it's been two weeks yet. Like I, I it almost feels kind of like an Oliver Anthony type thing. I don't know if you're familiar with his. Mm, yeah. I mean, but like, because it was like the, the um, Honestly, just to see sensory inclusion taken more seriously and given it, given the attention it needs, I think would be – maybe let this be kind of like an eye-opener for that. And, it, and I'm not saying everybody use pro wrestling for everyone. I'm just saying, again, let this be more of an eye-opener for like, all right, this is needed. Kids need this. Families need this. Because – Again, pro wrestling for everyone, and that, I'm not saying that as you know as a gimmick because that's what, what that's what we're called. Having that those options there because I've had heard plenty of stories uh, from I keep name dropping, but Ron's himself where he there his kids haven't been able to come because it was too loud, yeah, or you know just many of their examples. So just having this there, I feel like. The goal is just just having this as available as it can be. I mean, I might sound sort of just simple, but I don't yeah. really have any long-term goals right now because, honestly, the reception we've had just in the short time this has even been a thing has been su surpassed 
any goal I had already. So, Well, the cool thing about pro wrestling, just like anything else, is you are able to find a niche that no one else is really using, you know, it's a, right. it's, you have to find that void and kind of have to go with something that's never been done before. If nobody else is using it and you found something that no one else is really doing. And that's really amazing to see. I mean, you, not a lot of places can say that they specialize in X, right? So right. what you're doing is specializing in something that's going to help the pro wrestling community and beyond. Mm -hmm. and, and, I, and, and it's, it's, it's from a personal standpoint as well. It's not just like, all right, I see there's a need for this too. But like, I actually know it personally. Like I said, because both, both of my kids deal with it, deal with it as well. So, yeah. And you find something that you can relate to and your kids can relate to and it just helps out so many people i could see this thing definitely taking off and making a big difference like i said the reaction we've gotten in such a short time already it was just like it was really kind of mind-blowing when i saw how many shares that's what I was looking for. because yeah it's we've got it we've gotten a good reaction so far lots of opportunities that I wasn't really expecting. So yeah, it's we've gotten a good good reaction so far. Definitely. Well, why do you feel passionate about this cause and helping out in your community? Um, again, like I said, my kids. Um, it, it, I know from experience, it helped out my son at that show AEW I mentioned earlier. My daughter could care less, honestly. She likes help. She likes helping dad. She likes being involved, but she could care less about wrestling. Um, and again, me being involved uh, with children's ministry and being a um, a parent of kids with you know special needs, sensory needs myself, just having someone there that can having someone there, having an option there that can relate. Um, to your situation can get down your kid's level and ha and again me having me being a parent of someone with sensory needs when we have a kid come through our our children's uh, church at school a lot and I, this is not me putting myself on a pedestal by many means too a lot of times I've been told that seeing me being uh, easier to relate to any of the kids with disabilities or special needs, it's it's really a game changer for that parent to seeing somebody who can take the time to get on their kid's level. And so having options there at a wrestling show that you're interested in and you want your kids to be able to enjoy, but that limitations kind of there of how they can how they can enjoy it, having that option there where they can. Those kind of things, like I said, that, that those things are game changers, and just having that, being being able to, being able to minister to families that need that kind of stuff on that level, and being involved in independent wrestling, you know, something that I love and want other people to be able to love, just the same. Yeah, I think that's just, that kind of sums it up. I think for me, definitely, and and really, independent wrestling's always seen some up and down periods. Some people go to other companies that make it big from the indies. And then you got new fresh faces in there. So it goes through sort of ebbs and flows. That's yeah. why a lot of people, a lot of people say support the indies because you just never know where that next set of talent's going to come from. And exactly. it's so cool to see how much independent wrestling has grown in the last Absolutely. 20 years. So, I, I think this is going to be pretty big, what you're doing, and I'm I'm just want to say that I'm proud of you, and want to say congratulations for starting this. Uh, where can people find? Where can people find more about pro wrestling is for everyone? And do you have anything you want to plug or promote that you guys are doing in the future? Um, sure. Um, right now, all we have is just Facebook. It's pro wrestling is for everyone. Uh, that is search for that. Um, 
I'm I plan on getting more socials eventually right now as I'm helping with social media for uh AWO and CPW. I'm trying to do what I can right now, but we do have we are on Facebook. December 9th, both we're gonna be with Wrestling Evolution in Denver, North Carolina. Um right now we've got a something in the works for January, but nothing set in stone yet. Again, super busy in just a period of a couple weeks. Um but um but yeah follow us on Facebook. Uh feel free any messages, any feel free to contact me. I'm gonna try to get some I have plans to maybe get some t-shirts, merchandise, something uh made up eventually. Again, all proceeds from that would go back to help fun and make our organization better as far as what we can provide and stuff as well. Yeah. But um yeah, I think that kind of covers everything for right now. I feel bad. I forgot I li- when I was listening at the first I lift up my home promotion permit, but I was like, that's my own ADHD kicking out there, <laughs> kicking in there. But uh yeah. But um yeah. yeah. Travis, I uh, just want to say thank you for coming on the show. It means a lot to me and our listeners. Thank you. Thank great you so way to, having. yeah, we get to help kind of collaborate here with both of our brands. Hopefully, this Absolutely. will do some good for helping both of our brands grow. I just want to say thank you again for coming on here, and you're more than welcome to come back. Thank you. Absolutely. Look forward to it. All right. Take care. You too. This is Wrestling With Heart. I hope you found this podcast to be informative and entertaining. If you did, please hit the subscribe button and look out for the next edition.